New Guinea, a wartime bastion, becomes the scene of a dramatic peacetime experiment. 230 miles from Leh, across the Ramu and Garoka Valleys, is Kerawagi. This is the heart of New Guinea, 5,300 feet above the sea. From the surrounding mountains come thousands of natives. The warlike Kuros, the Danga, Dagi, Pagao and Bangi, chanting their marching songs. Some have marched four days. Many have never seen a white man. But today, despite weirdly painted faces and bird of paradise headdress, these are men of peace. They've deserted their villages to see the big fella bird come down from the sky. This is the beginning of a new life for Wagi Valley, a new industry for its 10,000 tribesmen. The white man has come and he has brought sheep. Inoculated against anthrax prevalent among wild pigs in the valley, these Romney Marsh sheep may be pioneers of vast flocks. From then it is hoped to breed sheep to keep Wagi Valley clothed and fed, as fierce-looking natives learn to be peaceful shepherds. It's all right, these natives are vegetarians at the moment. It's strange to the sheep at first, but on these fertile plateau, they should soon become acclimatized, for this is La Mana land of eternal spring. Sydney philanthropist E.J. Holstrom gave £20,000 to establish an experimental station here and the chief wants to hear all about it. Selected natives will first be taught to be shepherds, then experts will be sent from Australia to teach them shearing and finally they'll be given stud sheep to start tribal flocks. But first, sheep must be driven to Nondougal, where the experimental station has been started on 500 acres granted by the Commonwealth Government. 12 miles over plains and winding trails. It's droving with a difference. There are no barking sheepdogs, and natives go back too. In a village along the trail, natives mourn a member of their tribe who has died. The ceremony lasts two days, with the body laid out and tribesmen in a circle about it. Men are chief mourners for one day, then the women take over, and they cover themselves with mud to show their sorrow. But the sheep and their native drovers are nearing Nondougal. This is not the steaming New Guinea Australian and American soldiers knew. The temperature is always about 70 degrees. The land of eternal spring lives up to its name. Nondougal is a real pioneering venture. Native affairs expert Captain Ned Blood told Mr. Holstrom sheep could be bred here, that tribesmen would welcome the scheme. So now the sheep have arrived and Mr. Holstrom tells of the plan, asking tribal chiefs to cooperate. Captain Blood, manager of the station, interprets, and the native chiefs give their approval. When tribal flocks are established, native women, or Marys, will be taught spinning and weaving. They learn that wool makes clothes. And imagine the advertisements. Suit with extra pair of pants, all for one stone axe and a bird of paradise feather. <laughs> women bring vegetables from native farms and receive as payment a teaspoon of lipstick powder to be mixed with pig fat and smeared on the face. Civilization certainly has made great strides in Wagi Valley. Only white woman in the area is Captain Blood's wife. She and eight-month-old Susan are idolized by the tribesmen. There's no shortage of native girls, and it's just as well because polygamy is universal. In fact, a man's wealth is measured by the number of his wives. And girls, like their menfolk, pierce their noses in five places and stick bamboo and shells through the holes. A camera is always an attraction, and not only to the men. Oh, fancy, a real screen test. I wonder which of us will be Miss New Guinea. No, it's not King Billy, but it might be Tin Billy. And that breastplate straight from a shot down zero. Washing's not very popular among these natives who usually cover themselves with pig fat. So the sight of a native houseboy hanging out the clothes is a real comedy turn. But funniest act is an athletic stunt specially staged for the great white chiefs. The poles greased with old sump oil from Captain Blood's jeep. It's 25 feet high and there's a football on top. A free-for-all and no holds barred, if they can get a hold.
These boys need a lot more practice. They'd never get a toehold on a Sydney tram. Sorry, girls, the screen test's over. They're nearly on top, but they cheated. They rubbed most of the sump oil off. This is a case of two heads being better than one, if you can stand on them. Well, he made it. Fancy all that trouble for a football. Still, he only went 25 feet. The kangaroos went to England, and they didn't get much of the ball. He's puffing so much, he should blow it up while he's in the mood. And now the wild curos brandish spears, bows and arrows as they group in tribal dances to the beating of their bundos. As native people throughout Asia seek more independence, this Australian experiment is of more than ordinary importance. The chief looks out over his lands and is satisfied. Perhaps he sees a vision of growing flocks, of a healthy and contented people. The white man has brought new hope to Wagi Valley. <laughs>